Hi, everybody. We're going to get started in about one minute. Okay, uh, let's get started. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the August 2022 CAG meeting. Thank you for making the time to be here. We, um, we are gonna end a little bit early today, so we've only allotted um, until 5.30 as opposed to the usual six, so just a reminder about that. So Desiree, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Paula. I'm going to remember to share my screen this time because I haven't the past two meetings. Um, and just kind of as Paula said, and I want to introduce myself in a second, but this is just an update to the last meeting because we did meet um, just a couple of weeks ago. So it's not the full, you know, a full presentation. Um, it just has some updates um, and some questions, some items that have been coming up recently. Um, so once again, um, my name is Desiree Gazzo. I'm from HNTB Lero, the Program Manager, Construction Manager, PMCM um, for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Um, I'm joined here with colleagues from um, the PMCM and from DDC, um, for, for which we represent. And we have the Community Advisory Group meeting number 24. Um, I do want to say that we are still working on some of the responses that Paula, Paula and Tara had sent over um, several questions on the Gantt chart. We will have, we do have an update on the Gantt chart here, um, but we are just working on um, some of the responses for the questions that we received and we are looking to get them back to you this week. Um, we just have to have, um, you know, the review process and then we will um, send them over. So those are in the process of being responded to. Um, so any questions that, you know, that were there, I might, you know, not have the answers to today. Um, so project area overview, again, this hasn't changed. Um, Esker focus area topics, we're just going to focus on a couple of these today. Um, we have an update on community tabling. Um, the Corlears Hook Park uh, tabling, we were going to uh, originally due today, um, but since the CAG presentation was scheduled for today, um, we had moved it last week to the um, 25th. So next week, we will do the Corlears Hook Park um, presentation. And then on the 30th, we'll do tabling at Hamilton Fish Park. So we're just gonna jump right into the construction progress approach and environment. Um, so we'll do the project area overview and then we'll do project area one and project area two. Uh, the only update is the AQM update for this month or last month rather. 
Um, the project area overview hasn't changed for project area one and project area two since the last time we met. Um, we did update parallel conveyance um, with the uh, joint venture that the contract was awarded to in May. So that's NYCC, JPL, JV. Um, they are scheduled to receive NTP in September. Um, again, the NTP has not been issued. That's the notice to proceed. Um, they are scheduled to receive it in September. We will, again, you know, as always, provide updates on when they actually receive NTP. Um, it, when they receive NTP, it doesn't mean that they're going to start the next day. There's still um, the, the um, preparation for construction start that needs to happen. Um, we've had previous presentations on that, kind of the steps that happen in between NTP and when you'll actually see folks on site. Um, so again, we know that there have been several requests for a parallel conveyance update, um, and we are working with that team to see when um, an update, again, will be provided to CAG and CB3. So, um, so these are the updates for now. Again, the contract was awarded in May. Um, the NTP is scheduled for September, and then construction will not begin um, until after the NTP in fall of 2022. And again, that construction duration is approximately four years. All right, so the construction timeline, just to respond to a few um, general questions that we received, um, the timeline is in actual year, um, year span. It's not by fiscal year. Um, each quarter spans three months. So quarter one is January, February, March, then April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Um, we'll pull up the construction timeline in the next, the next slide. Um, for the more detailed East River Park phasing, please refer back to the PA1 construction approach. The timeline only breaks out phase one and phase two. It doesn't break it out into the kind of sub phases that are shown in the PA1 construction approach, um, which is on the website, which is from um, last year. So please refer to that. And even that does need to be updated a bit because we are not starting reach J um, in phase one that will start in phase two. So there is a bit of a um, update that has to happen there, but that does show more clearly um, the kind of sub phases that will happen. And we'll look to um, update that here in the near future. Uh, we received some questions about the Greenway. Um, just a reminder, the Greenway was supposed to be closed um, as soon as construction started because um, Reach J work was moved to phase two. The contractor was able to keep um, the northern portion of the Greenway open, um, except for, of course, the part where the Con Ed work is happening. Um, however, you know, the contractor will need to take back, you know, take access over um, on the, from the Greenway as we move forward with construction. So again, we'll provide updates on that, but there were some questions about, um, you know, if, if parts of it will reopen. Um, the Con Ed work will, you know, continue into next year, as will the Houston Street retaining wall work. So there will be, again, still a significant chunk of the Greenway that is closed until it is eventually um, wall closed. And then, um, there were a couple of questions about, can we include um, initial completion and start dates um, so that it could be determined what, um, what's fallen behind or, or what um, work items are having problems. So we just wanted to note that everything on the timeline and, and in the project, and as we, you know, we, we write on everything is all work is subject to change. The contractor does have flexibility with when certain tasks of the, of the construction can start and finish. Um, just because a, a task shifts in its start or end date, that doesn't mean that the, the schedule is off or that there was a problem or, um, you know, due to, again, materials or um, labor or just how, you know, field conditions, 
the sequencing of some of the work might change, um, but you know, more than likely the contractor is working on something else instead of that task. So we just wanted to make that clear that that's not an indicator of, of there's a problem or there's a delay in work. Um, you'll see as we um, put out the timelines, this timeline has even changed slightly from the timeline that we had um, had issued a, a couple of months ago. So, um, you know, there, there will be slight changes and that's, that's how the, you know, that's how the construction is progressing. Um, however, the end date is remaining um, the same and the general phasing, again, is also remaining the same. So this is the updated construction timeline. We did um, add the planned um, finish column here as requested, and we will send over Paula and Tara. There was a request for just the um, kind of, um, this part of the uh, timeline to be on one page and then the kind of Gantt chart on another. Um, so we'll send that over with the responses to the questions. I'm not gonna go over this whole thing right now, but it's here and it'll be posted on the website um, tomorrow and we'll send it over. But this is um, does reflect some of the questions that were asked. Um, for the construction progress and activities, most of the items again are, um, are the same as what we had discussed a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then the new item is the amphitheater asbestos abatement, which is scheduled to begin next week. Um, so we will talk about that um, in one of the next uh, slides here. Um, so one of some of the other questions that we received were on the um, Con Ed utility work that's within the ESKER contract. That's the, so the, the ESKER utility work um, with the Con Ed, you know, utilities. So the, this top portion of the presentation, um, PA1 ESKER Con Ed coordination, we have presented, um, we presented it the last time we presented and that kind of details how Con Ed and the ESKER contractor and again, the PMCM and TDC work together um, it is work on Con Ed utilities that is under, um, that is within the ESKER contract. Much of it, the contractor is completing. And then there are some um, small portions that Con Ed workers um, do perform in-house. Um, and then there is Con Ed oversight. Um, so the Con Ed utility work, um, items that are scheduled for this project we have listed here. So, and they're listed by section. So Montgomery Street and South Street is the, the first part and that's um, kind of around the Gouverneur Gardens area. Um, so the test pits for utility confirmation that work has been completing, has been completed. The steam anchor relocation and steam line abatement, that's the utility work that's happening right now. Um, and then, quarter four, 2022, roughly quarter four, 2022 to quarter one, 2023, um, once we start working in that area. Uh, and again, that's subject to change, um, but that would be kind of the enabling work, the utility relocation um, to avoid conflict with, with escrow structures when we start building the wall. Um, so again, these are, you know, approximate timelines um, for reach A and B. Um, that's quarter three and quarter four. So that's what we're doing now where the flood wall is going to um, be installed. That's the day and night work that's happening um, along the Greenway at Montgomery Street. So that's the carbon fiber wrapping of the oil static lines, which is the same work that was happening in the Greenway um, in reaches G, H and I. Again, that's the, the next part, which is that, that much long, that longer span that goes up to um, to almost East, East 6th Street. And then throughout the project, which does not have a specific timeline, as, um, as work is happening, as excavations are happening, as, you know, then there will be as required utility relocation, supportive utilities, and monitoring of Con Ed facilities during construction. So the, those items um, do not have a specific timeline on them. Um, but there is kind of ongoing just Con Ed um, presence and, and, you know, their lines run throughout the project. So um, it, is, it is an ongoing coordination item um, as we move through the, through the project. 
um, for the amphitheater asbestos abatement. Um, so there have been several questions about this and we have responded um, in for questions that we have received already. Um, but just to kind of go over, uh, you know, exactly what, what happened with the amphitheater asbestos, um, DDC had taken 13 samples of materials from inside um, the amphitheater and found no asbestos. In 2001, the Parks Department did construction at the site um, and reported no asbestos. And then once the park was fully closed and inaccessible to the public and the above ground structure was removed, a sub basement behind the amphitheater was found. And that's when work was stopped, further testing was done, and it was found that some pipe insulation contained asbestos and had to be removed. So all work was halted, um, you know, and then now, the work was going to happen to um, to to remove this in a safe way. So all work will be done in accordance with local, state, and federal guidelines um, to safely obtain and dispose of the material. The material has not been disturbed since it was tested. So it is an again an underground sub basement behind the amphitheater. Um, all asbestos materials will be isolated and contained in a fully enclosed containment zone. Um, so you will start to see folks in um, Tyvek suits, in protective gear, because they will be in close proximity with the asbestos containing materials. Just like when we had to do the removal of the Delancey Street Bridge, these are professionals. Um, it's a licensed asbestos asbestos abatement contractor has been hired to start work next week. Um, it'll take about six weeks. Um, and then there's an independent consultant hired to monitor the work. So as we had the have as we have the multi-level oversight with the air monitoring, um, there is multi-level oversight with the asbestos abatement um, as well. So it is being again handled according to all local, state, and federal guidelines. It has been contained um, since it was, um, you know, found, and it will be uh, disposed of in, in a very careful and safe manner um, by professionals who this is their job, this is what they do. Um, so again, it will take any questions after, um, I think there's only one or two, a couple more slides, um, and then we, we could take questions on that. Um, for PA1, for the air quality monitoring July 22 update, um, there were levels of, so there was no 24 hour um, time weighted average surpassing of the PEL for the, for the month of July. I'll, I'll fix that before I, um, before I post it to the website. Um, levels of particulate matter surpassed the PEL for less than 15 minutes on two occasions. Um, on 721 for three minutes and then on 727 for one minute. So it's very low, um, again, surpassing of the, the PEL for, for project area one. Um, the July monitoring locations we presented last time too. However, I included them here to accompany the July um, report. So there are currently 14 air quality monitors on site. Um, as of July, and that's what the readings were based off of. Um, for PA2 AQM update, there were three um, occasions where the PEL was surpassed. And again, these were for about 15 minutes or less on each occasion. Um, on July 4th and 5th, um, there was, you know, a, when there was no work happening, um, the uh, PEL was surpassed for 15 minutes, and then for um, on the 17th, um, there was also, but it was at a time, it was in the evening when there was no work occurring, and then um, uh, I think also on the 17th for 13 minutes, but that was during the day um, when a concrete truck was idling there. So again, very um, minor um, AQM update. Uh, so just a couple of items on what we've heard. Um, two, two of the comments, and this is the last slide for today, 
um, was the noise um, at PA1 at Montgomery Street Greenway for the um, demolition that's happening there. Um, there was a very large um, hammer equipment that was working um, in the evening to uh, help demolish a, a larger section there um, that is still being used during the day. However, at night, they can now use um, smaller hammer equipment, um, which should help with the, with the noise um, there. Again, we do understand that there will be, be noise there at night. Um, again, most of the flood wall will be within the park and most of the flood wall work will be able to happen um, during the day. It is this section here from Montgomery Street to Cherry Street um, where that work needs to happen at night. Um, so again, you know, continue to reach out to our CCLs if um, they've been, you know, fielding the comments and, and questions that have been coming in. Um, however, you know, the, the work activities will change once the, the demolition is, is complete, the work activities will change. And when the pile install happens, um, that will be with, a, again, a vibratory method and not a pile driving method. Um, but again, please reach out please continue to reach out to our CCLs if you have any questions. Um, we also received a, a question about the soil piles um, and the fact that they are uh, being covered above and below with tarps. Um, so in most instances, the soil is tested prior to excavation. Um, if the contractor needs to excavate um, a portion of the soil that um, hasn't been tested before excavation, then the contractor just needs to um, put a tarp below the pile and above the pile um, to prevent, prevent any accidental and incidental kind of cross-contamination between tested and untested um, soil. Um, and then once the soil is tested, then it is either um, reused on site or disposed of off-site depending on the contamination present as they do with um, all soil on site. So we just wanted to um, bring that, uh, bring that or address that comment as well. Um, and that's it for our update today. And uh, Paula and Tara, we can take any questions that we have. Thank you, Desiree. I didn't, so it's either Wendy or Christine. I'm not sure who had their hand raised first. Christine did. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Go for it, Christine. All right, I will. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, Desiree, how are Hello. you? Hello. Um, I just have a question about um, the um, construction timeline that was shared um, because I just don't, um, <clears throat> I, I think I interpret it differently than uh, what you have said about phasing. Um, because um, for phase two, the demolition, removal, and excavation starts in um, 2023 in the fourth quarter, so that would be October, uh, while at the same time uh, for phase one, um, the planting, paving, and furnishings are not complete until until well about um the third end of third quarter of 2024 so maybe i should ask um paving planting and furnishings are you going to install that while that section of the park is open so the the phase one is opening in sub phases so if you look at the PA1 construction approach, and I, I could have put slides in here, but it's on the website. I could also put a link. Oh, we could put, I could put a link in the chat um, as soon as I'm done talking. So um, if you look, oh, and it's, let's see, is it here? Um, yeah, the PA1 construction approach. So I could put the link in the chat um, or Joyce, our, our CCL can, can pop the link into the chat. Um, if you look at the, the way, the project is phased. There's the two main phases, phase one and phase two. However, um, you know, sometime next year, sometime in the summer of next year, 
the lower portion of phase one is scheduled to open. So once the lower portion opens, then part of phase two can close. So there will still, so there will be parts of phase one open while phase two then starts up to maintain the 42% the open space. Does that make sense? Not really, but- Okay, uh, I could also just um, stop sharing for a second. Um, new share, nope, not new share. Where's stop share? Oh, stop share, here we go. Um, okay, just give me one second because it will take me two seconds to get to the construction phasing and then I can just share that. And okay, hold on, share screen, screen two. Okay, so on the, hold on. Okay, so on the DDC website, the PA1 preliminary construction approach is here. And um, if you go to here, uh, 2023, then you'll see, so here's 2022 and we have this lower portion closed, right? Up to reach F, we're not working in reach J. Right. Um, so we have this part closed up to reach F. So then if you go to 2023, you'll see the lower half closes and then we start demolition in reach G. So as we open, then we start to close. And then as we open more, then we start to close more in phase two. So it's a it's a it's like a rolling opening and closing, which is why there's some overlap of when you have demolition starting while we're still finishing phase one, because part of phase one will be open and we'll start to close part of phase two. Mm -hmm. Does that help? It helps. My only concern really is like, for example, of course, always uh, focused on the campus yard and also the amphitheater for that matter. Those things will not be finished by the time you open in summer of 2023. But this will still be passive lawn here. Oh, passive lawn. I, I don't see much of that left. Uh, Right, so at this point, the temporary bridge will come down. Um, the utility should be done in this area and that, you know, so, and then there'll be a point when the compost, again, that schedule we don't have in this yet. So once that schedule gets incorporated, then there will be a time when the compost yard is under construction, you know, and the, um, again, this will look a little differently. Right, so um, some of these sections uh, down there will close again for more construction. How is um, the amphitheater, uh, when is the, um, you know, sort of this covering over this amphitheater, is that going to be installed before uh, it opens? That is undetermined, that, that that is still under design, so we do not have a definitive, or at least I do not have an, an update on that right now. I don't know if... Um, Jeff has an update, but um, it, I, yeah. I don't have that update, you know, at and, this point, because it is still under uh, final design. And then uh, the same thing I'm wondering about the Fireboat House, how, uh, whether the work, it looks like it's, um, but whether the work inside the building will be complete by uh, that time. That's also, I know there was a question about that that we received and that's something that we're trying to get a, a response on as well. Yeah, hi, uh, Christine, it's Jeff Margolis. I, so we've been talking to Parks about specifically about the Fireboat House and I know we owe you an update. So that's something we can come back with in the very near future. Um, in terms of, was it the amphitheater canopy? Was that the additional question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, it's going through the final review process, the final design process. Uh, I, I don't know, it, it will be incorporated into the project, but I think we need to get you a little more specific. So I, we can we can get back to you on that as well. Okay, great, thanks. Sure. Wendy? Hi, sorry, I'm not turning my camera on. I'm trying to conserve my battery, I'm out. Um, the pipes that are in the sub-basement of the amphitheater 
do they extend beyond there? And where else are you expecting to find asbestos? Um, in, within the, so the, the pipes that are in the amphitheater are contained within the amphitheater. So that is what is being abated at this point. Um, I can't speak to uh, where else within the project um, asbestos is, is expected, um, but if you, I could come back with a response on that question. That would be great. Um, I wanna also ask, I have about three or four questions. The tarping, you explained how now there's a new procedure, tarps go below as well as above materials that haven't been tested. And that's underneath is brand new right now. And it took several months to start covering the top as well. What makes the change? Was it did it have anything to do with the asbestos being found that the tarping is now underneath as well? No, that is completely separate. The, that is it's not, it's also not a new procedure. Um, the excavated soil that was excavated prior to, you know, currently um, was tested before excavation. So soil that is not tested before excavation needs to have the tarping above and below. So the okay. soil now is unclassified and they need to tarp above and below. The soil that was previously excavated had been tested and then followed that, that route. I understand. Um, there is a big rig in on, up by 18th Street, just off the water. Do you know what that is? This platform? on four legs that's been moving around from 18th to 20th in PA2? Hi, hi Wendy. Yeah, hi. this came up as a media inquiry that we got. It's not related to ESCR. We, we thought it might be a DEP related rig, but it's not related to ESCR. Okay, thank you. Um, what about um, vibration? You mentioned you've got smaller machines coming in and noise, you're getting noise complaints. So you're also getting vibration complaints. No, we have not received any vibration complaints. Okay. And what's the story with the latest on Pier 42? I can see that there's I can see what looks like maybe basketball courts now, but Pier 42 is not part of Eastside Coastal Resiliency. I think EDC is potentially providing an update on Pier 42 at the next CB3 meeting, but you could reach out to their CCL if you want updates on Pier 42. Okay. And I just want to say it's really good that there's now 14 meters, and that's very helpful that they're now located closer to where people are in the park and where the people, people live. And I hope that um, if the, as the work extends, more will be added where there's questions, especially as sections are opening and closing in, in piecemeal. So I'm done with my questions though. Great, thank you. Michael? Hello. Um... So Desiree, I have a, a, just a couple of things. First, um, I wanted to thank you for the, that explanation about the asbestos. Um, I think it's uh, very clear what the issue is. I'm just a little surprised that nobody in the parks department or involved in this project knew that the old rec center had a basement. Um, so, uh, but I appreciate the explanation and I, I think it's, uh, it's beneficial for us to know exactly what those facts are so that we can let the community know because I know that especially where I live there's been a lot of talk about the asbestos abatement uh, in the amphitheater area and and concerns that the that the asbestos abatement will grow the area of it will grow so now I know what to tell people which is good um, <laughs> my second thing is about the tabling next week in Corlears I just had a question about because um, I know that that you guys and your staff have unfortunately had issues with tabling in the past and and um, you know unruly people so to speak. But uh, I'm just wondering what, if any, uh, protection or security will be on site with you guys. Um, I ask also because 
we've already had experienced some some vandalism in the park of some of the protesters, you know, using spray paint on our columns and whatnot to to spray their messages about their discontent for the project. So I'm just wondering if there's going to be anything on site with you guys. Um, that's a great question, Michael. I mean, the past tabling events that we've had, um, I guess we've been out there maybe the past three times. Um, I guess luckily or fortunately, um, the community has been really supportive. Um, you know, if, if people are against the project, they've just expressed their opinions and we've talked through things and it's been, um, you know, very amiable, amiable and, and we've had, you know, just a, a really, um, really great conversations and we haven't experienced um, what we used to experience when we were tabling in the park. And again, I know we've been asked why we aren't tabling in the park. And it, again, it seems that, um, I don't know why if it's the difference between in the park and on the street, but um, um, I think, you know, hopefully Corlier's Hook will be similar um, in that it will be able to have a peaceful tabling session. Um, one of the reasons that DDC and the team um, request that we do the tabling within the construction hours, um, within the work hours, is so that if there is if there is something that we need assistance in leaving the area quickly, um, the the team is there to support that. Um, whereas on you know in nights and on weekends, that support isn't there. So Corlier's Hook is close enough to the construction site. Our construction personnel um, will be aware that we will be. Um, tabling that day, as well as the team in DDC. Um, so we will, you know, that that is kind of, I guess, our security um, that we'll have that day. And I, you know, I'm so sorry to hear about the spray painting in the, um, in Corlier's Hook. That's unfortunate. Um, there, we've noticed spray painting in the open session sections of East River Park also, um, but Corlier's Hook, that's, that's going to remain um, an open park. So um, that is, very unfortunate. One of the call for art signs also got um, vandalized, so we had to take one of them down um, as well. Thankfully, the rest of them um, remain remain intact and, and unvandalized, but um, that is that is unfortunate. Thanks, Desiree. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, De Desiree, it's Danry. Uh, you want me to address the concern with the asbestos? Um, if if there was more to say then you're more than welcome to. So the concern with the asbestos and possibility being outside of the zone, as it was disclosed, it's a sub-basement uh, within, uh, within the building. Those um, were old pipes that are um, insulated with asbestos. Back that time, they were using asbestos as insulation. Those, as mentioned before, they are contained to that a uh, specific area. It's not expected that it's outside of that zone and there's no anticipation to expect anything outside of that zone since they were all heat pipe or steam pipe that was used to heat the building. And since those uh, surface was abandoned and uh, eliminated from the use, um, it just got abandoned, left in place, and now it just has to be disposed of properly. So it's basically, it's a cleanup operation to clean up the asbestos, do the rest of the, uh, the uh, demolition and the necessary work after that. Um, I don't see there is a need for any follow-up on this and the possibly um, expectation that there is gonna be some other follow-ups regarding asbestos. If that's the case, we will let you know as we encounter or, or if there is a need for any additional information to come back to the team. Thank you. Thanks, Damri. Um, Tara and Paula, I don't see any other hands raised, but I'm not sure if- I don't either. Saying anything. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question. Um, it, I'm curious about the coordination between the Con Ed work that's being done along the Greenway and um, the, the phasing of the park itself. Is that being coordinated in a certain, how is that going to be coordinated in the future so that there is some accessibility as the Greenway is closed down, specifically the 6th Street 
uh, bridge and the um, 10th Street Bridge to like the uh, running track and all that. Um, great question, Charles. Um, as, as I mentioned previously, um, the Greenway wasn't supposed to be open during any part of construction. That was supposed to be closed and then um, cross-throughs would be provided um, you know, at the openings again, Houston Street, 6th Street and 10th Street. Um, the contractor has been able to keep um, that most of the Greenway open until now when the Con Ed work uh, was moving uh, forward. Again, the phasing was also inclusive of the, um, the Con Ed, what we're calling the Con Ed work in the Greenway. Um, and, and that was one of the reasons that the phasing occurred the way it did to get that um, portion of the work done and completed before uh, the construction work happened in phase two where the fill needed to occur, et cetera. So it was very inclusive of the utility work that had to occur there. Um, and as um, construction moves forward and as the greenway closes in full, as we move forward, um, the contractor will make accommodations to allow access through the entrances that need to be open to um, accommodate access to the amenities that are open. So the 6th Street Bridge would remain open or the 10th Street Bridge or I mean how? As, as per the phasing. So when in, while we're in phase one, the 6th Street and the 10th Street entrances will remain open. And then as we shift into phase two, um, per the construction timeline that we have here and the construction approach that's on the website, um, then they will start to close accordingly as um, entrances down in the southern part of the project open. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think Marty has his hand up also. Um, I, I, I learned that I'm un, unable to do two Zooms at the same time. And unfortunately, I had a work Zoom that started at four o'clock. Did you do PA2? No, this was just an update and there weren't any updates for PA2 since the last, um, since the last yes. presentation. So, so my question is, the last time you said around this time, the north part of the park will be opened. Where are we in? in that projection? Sure, so the, I believe the last time I was here, and I'm not sure if it was the CAG or CB3, um, Dina Elkin was also on from Solar One, um, and we had had that conversation that the area in the northern part near Solar One um, potentially wouldn't open until uh, about September. And Dan so Ray, if you in, have in, anything in else to weeks, add. In a couple well, of weeks. <laughs> let's, let's, let's backtrack on that for a second. Yep. So um, it was the anticipation that we were going to have the northern portion of Stifle Park um, partly completed where it possibly could have access to the general public uh, used. Um, we are on track to finish uh, the most of the northern portion by the end of uh, September. There was a meeting that was held with uh, the Solar One folks and EDC, and they are advising that they would not want to have the park open until all the plantings are completed. And we cannot plant until uh, possibly October, November at the planting season. So the greater push of having it open we are willing construction are willing to open the uh, the the walkway the open space however there is concern with the planting and there is also some concern with having uh, the general public into that zone where there is additional work has to be completed so at this time we are still working it through with uh, the solar one folks and edc uh, we are still on track as long as they give us their consent to open we will so probably we're talking about November. Possible, yes. Um, that's providing that we are able to have the plants and plant. We are currently working with the um, the landscaper to ensure that they have secure all the plants. Uh, these plants are not something that 
you know, are readily available. It's something that they will have to um, start prep and grow and have the availability to be able to deliver on plant. So it's in the works. Um, it's in coordination right now in advance of the planting season to make sure that we have everything we need. We are hoping that we will be able to get everything we need. However, if, if we get the most of it done with a few setbacks, we could possibly still open up the plant with the consent of VDC and Solar One. So that's the works right now. Um, and again, it's all part of the uh, phasing and it's all part of having all party in the same boat on the same page. Um, the Solar One folks who are the um, operator of the park, they want to be able to be comfortable that they have the means and method and the necessary necessity to maintain the park after we turn it over to them. So it's a work in progress. Thank you for the update. Uh, Sandra? Hi, and I just wanted to note that we're asking that um, you come again to CB6. It's September 22nd is our meeting, so we're hoping to get an update on all of this. And by then we should have hopefully a, a good idea of when the park will be open. So um, that's the land use meeting for CB6. Great, thank you. Great, and Sandy, you'll send us a, an email, right? I'll yes. put it on the calendar now, now that I know the date, but you'll send us a formal email. Okay, Absolutely. Great. Thank you. And Marty, please come if you have time. <laughs> I'll be in England. <laughs> oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be in England too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Marty. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be there for two weeks, though, bouncing around, seeing different friends. It's been a while since we've been over. It sounds Mar much better than being at the CB6 meeting. So enjoy. Mar <laughs> Marty, Marty is allowed extra baggage, so, <laughs> so we'll all come. <laughs> sure. I, I'm actually allowed two, uh, two bags each on, uh, on this flight. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Desiree. Desiree. Thank you. All right. So um, those of you um, city agency reps and others, if you would like to um, hop off the meeting, that would be great. Um, and then in about uh, like two minutes, we'll um, just do a, a short CAG portion. Um, yeah. So at 4.53.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the CAG only portion of the meeting. Um, Tara and I figured we would kind of leave it open ended and see um, if there are any, any issues that might have arisen from what you heard or any other things people want to bring up. The only thing I wanted to bring up was um, just to follow up on the conversation we were having last month about attendance issues and and um, you know I don't I know we don't want to you know become sort of a, a hard line thing about attendance and whatnot but um, and I'm actually pleasantly surprised that there's more than ten people on today's call because I know we were worried about that um, but. Uh, but I was wondering, I know that you guys post the notes or you send us the notes of all the meetings, but do you have like an attendance grid of all of our meetings? And like, so I, I'm just wondering if there is a, um, like a group that just has not been represented at all or for a majority of the meetings or whatever that, you know, it might make sense to make some outreach to and be like, hey, yeah. you know, this group was formed for a reason and you guys aren't represented on it at all. Yeah, we're in, pro that's in process, but we do, we have the, we do um, list all of the members that are attending for each time, but Paul and I, we've done um, a bit of analysis of attendance over the past, I think past year or so. Um, we've had conversations with elected officials who are assisting us um, on this effort. Um, we think it might be a mix of reasons. Um, I do think time might be a concern because this is still, you know, to work at least for, four, you know, right now we are still in work hours for most people. Um, um, also, I do think that some people are just fine with things as they are because construction is actually happening. Um, but we are doing outreach to learn more. And again, um, you know, especially if we are going to, which I don't think any of us want to do, if we were to move to a requ you know, requirement, attendance requirement, I do think that with that would come a shift in the time to make it more accommodating for those who cannot attend um, between four and six. Um, but we are, this is something that we have been actively working on and been working on with the local um, council member representatives. All right, great, thanks. Sorry, Wendy, I stepped on your hand raise and then just started talking. No, I put my hand up after you started talking. No worries. Um, I'm wondering about if there's any concerns about, you know, we heard about the asbestos, we heard about the piles not being tested. If they've been testing piles all this time, would they, can we, can, can the CAG ask that they share that information, what was found in the piles? And um, I ask that because there's been a foil since April for them and there's been no response to that. And, you know, we foiled together that other a soil report, the 2019 soil report. And it's very clear there's lead, benzene um, and other materials, mercury right around the amphitheater and right by that passive lawn where people are now sitting their dogs are rush, running around in it. And I don't know if you remember how splashy it was, how wet, whatever was in there is being tracked home in that butt. On the other hand, maybe they tested the soil. Can we get soil test reports? I don't know if we have enough people to vote on it now, but we would want to make sure that this is something that more than one CAG member is requesting. Um, we okay, could, yeah. I, I don't know what people here think about that, but it's, um, you know, we're getting reports on noise complaints and air quality. Why not soil quality, what they're, get, what they're finding? I, I would back that. I mean, we still, unfortunately, we, we don't have quorum in order to do that, but I mean, we could, we could put this through, um, through email. Um, yeah, could you do either that or yeah. could you just ask them coming from me and I guess Charles that we want would like to see the reports? Sure. Thank you. Um, Dina? Yeah, we had initially asked for the reports for Sty Cove. Um, a while back, and initially DDC was not 
sure that they wanted to give them to us, which we found alarming, but they have since agreed that they would. So um, I'm certainly in favor of that. And I'm happy to vote on it in the future. Sorry, actually, when, when, actually, when when Stykov was first being built in uh, twenty in, in 1998 nine, some of us were a little concerned about what they would really find, considering it was a concrete factory, and there was all sorts of things that were that were w deep within the soil that we had hoped would never come up. Uh, other questions, concerns? Nothing else? I think we all just got back 28 minutes of our lives. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not so fast, Michael. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, uh -oh. I was just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this should be quick. Um, Paula and Tara emailed me um, about a specific question that I had asked. Um, and I just wanted to, since we're all here, just quickly, um, Paula, if you could share um, the response to the question about what is happening to the sections of the um, uh, Esplanade that are being removed from the, you know, the lower portion of East River Park. Uh, yes, hold on. Give me a second. Um, scrolling to find that. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, so just to repeat. So, um, so yeah, Diane asked, they're removing the Esplanade in sections. Are there plans to reuse those pieces, if not in the new Esplanade? than somewhere else. Um, so they responded that Esker will be reusing the existing piles below the concrete caps. And we are looking into whether or not the actual concrete caps that are being removed will be reused or recycled. And then they followed up today or yesterday and said that um, indeed there is not a plan to reuse the Esplanade sections within the Esker project. They're being taken off site to be crushed once crushed, it is likely that the material would be recycled. So Diane, you just brought that up so the whole group could hear the response or is there something else you wanna discuss? No, I just wanted to make sure that everyone heard that because it, um, I wasn't the only person who had that question. So I thought that um, since they had just replied, um, we should just share the information. That's it. Okay, thanks. I have one um, note that Last week, they closed the Sixth Street Bridge for two days, uh, and there was not much notification to the public whatsoever. Uh, so I think that going forward, they need to at least let people know they're going to be closing something for a couple of days, at, at least a week in advance, because people, it was really, really hot those days, for one thing. And uh, for people to to try to get over to the park and not be able to do it, it was uh, was put more than inconvenient. So I, I just think that they should be aware that they need to inform the public of what they're doing when they're closing down certain bridges or accesses to the park. That's just a note. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that they had a standard timeline of when they needed to notify people by, but but I think their their standard response would probably be something about it being an emergency or it being you know unplanned or whatever. And, that's why they didn't do the standard timeline. But I do believe there is a standard timeline in place of when they have to notify that they're gonna be closing something. Yeah, okay. and those signs are also still up. So it's very confusing because the bridge is open and it still says along Sixth Street that the bridge is closed. So um, I think they need to be more timely about also taking signs down once they reopen. Um, yeah, maybe some, it makes sense to reach out. I can reach out to the CCLs about this. Yeah, and for some reason they sent the CCLs out with duct tape to put the signs up. 
um, which, you know, didn't hold up well in the heat. And when the signs fell then, I think there was some concern that, you know, is this vandalism or the protesters tearing down the signs, which, you know, would be bad because they're informational signs that, you know, to Charles's point, let people know, you know, how they can access the park. So maybe they could, uh, you know, supply Joyce and, and uh, the, the team with some, um, some better zip ties and some better ways of attaching the signs because, I did find a number of them on the ground and I'm sure it was because the duct tape was melting in the heat. Um, anything else? Okay, well, um, uh, enjoy the year extra, you know, 24 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.